problem solving and data analysis comprise 29% of the math test. In this training, we'll cover tips for proportions, ratios, scatter plots, statistics, and more. It's a lot of material, but don't sweat it. If something is a little confusing, just scrub the play bar back and watch again until you fully understand. All right, let's get started. If I say I have a total of 12 cats and dogs, and the ratio of cats of dogs is 3 to 1, how many dogs do I have? This means that for every three cats, I have one dog. This setup is made up of four animals, so whenever you see a ratio, add up both numbers. That gives you the total. The ratio is the smallest accurate representation of the larger set. That's how ratios work. Like atoms for chemical elements, they are the smallest representation of the big picture. So in other words, three-fourths of my pets are cats, and one-fourth are dogs. So I said I have 12 pets. How many dogs do I have? That's right, three dogs. Oh, money. Who doesn't love money? What if I told you there's work to be done and the pay is $20 per hour? You can work as much or as little as you want, but that's the pay. As hours go up, pay goes up. If hours go down, pay goes down. This is known as a directly proportional relationship. We have money earned equals $20 multiplied by hours worked. Money earned is directly proportional with hours worked. Money earned is Y, hours worked is X, and 20 per hour is K, the constant of proportionality. Data can also be inversely proportional. I want to figure out how long it'll take eight people to paint my fence. All I know is that it takes three people four hours to paint it. What do I do? This is an inverse relationship. As the number of people goes up, time required to paint the fence goes down. If number of people goes down, time required to paint the fence goes up. So with direct proportion, both variables go up or down together. Inverse proportion, variables travel in opposite directions. Okay, it takes four hours for three people to paint the fence. This means k equals 12. Now plug this constant of proportionality back into the equation with the new specifics. How long will it take eight people to paint the fence? Time equals 12 over 8. It'll take 3 over 2, or 1 and a half hours, to paint the fence. On the test, think about how variables relate to each other. If one goes up, does the other go up or down? If proportions are confusing at all, please pause and review. Otherwise, we'll continue forward. Another common element on the test involves units. A lot of the math problems involve units. Okay, kilograms, picometers, years, milliseconds. We need to be able to switch between units as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Our pro tip for units is to use dimensional analysis. This is when we write out unit conversions as a series of multiplication steps. It ensures accuracy and frees up your mind from doing a bunch of math in your head. Okay, how many millimeters will this star move in a year, given that it has moved 900 kilometers in 8 million years? This is actually very easy to figure out using dimensional analysis. We want to go from kilometers per millions of years to millimeters per year. So we start on the left with just that. We have kilometers per year. We want millimeters per year. So we need to get rid of kilometers. Change kilometers to meters. Change meters to millimeters. Watch how the units cancel out and voila, you're left with millimeters per year. That's dimensional analysis. Next up, percents. Percent is a special type of proportion, meaning per 100. So 29% means 29 per 100. What about this, though? If I tell you modern human brains are triple the size of Neanderthal brains, can you tell me the percent increase in size? Is it 0%, 100, 200, or 300%? The answer is actually C. See, tripling doesn't mean a 300% increase. If the brains stayed the same size, that would be a 0% increase. Doubling would be a 100% increase, so tripling is actually a 200% increase. If a five-year-old experiences a 100% increase in age, he's now 10 years old, or double. 10 is 200% of five. But to go from five to 10, you experience a 100% increase. So it's a little confusing. When you see percentages, think slowly and methodically. If you need to go over percents again, I don't mind. Move the slide bar backwards and I'll say it exactly the same way for you. If not, we're going to move on to graphs. 
Check out this scatter plot. The data points are close together and trend upward. This means there's a strong positive correlation between time spent studying with Kate and the point increase on the test. If the data were all over the place, we would say that there's not a correlation. This is a line of best fit. It approximates the data in a linear model. You might be asked, how many points should I expect my math score to go up if I spend 32 hours studying with the gate system? For this, you would plug 32 in for x. A question may ask, for how many students in the study was the point increase on the test greater than the amount predicted by the line of best fit? Count the points above the line. Easy, right? What else about the graph should we have to know? You may be asked to interpret the meaning of the x and the y intercepts. Well, the y intercept here is 0, 0. So, 0 hours with gate would mean a 0 point increase on the test. You might see graphs dealing with linear and exponential growth. It's very easy to tell the difference. Just examine the change in successive quantities. If the difference in quantity is constant, the model is linear, like this data set here. Every year, height goes up by 2 inches. If the ratio between successive data points is the same, then you have exponential growth. Here, the ratio between each step is a factor of 4. Oh, almost done. You may also encounter probability problems. Probability will appear on the test. Probability is the number of desired outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. According to this data acquired by random sampling, if a student does not eat breakfast, what is the probability of passing the test? On the math test, it will be important to navigate tables like this. We are concerned with a student who does not eat breakfast, so we only focus on this area. And the student passes the test. This is our desired outcome, to not eat breakfast and pass the test. Our numerator is 25. The total outcome would be the fate of all the students who didn't eat breakfast. That's 350. That's our denominator. So the probability of a student not eating breakfast and passing the test is a measly 1 over 14, or 7.1 percent. Eat the breakfast. You'll see data sets and questions involving these forms. Remember, mean, median, and mode are measures of center for data. Standard deviation and range speak to how data is spread apart. You won't be asked to calculate standard deviation, but you should familiarize yourself with the meaning. The pro tip we have on research problems, because you'll see some questions involving research and data sampling, remember this. If there's a question that asks you to determine cause and effect from a study, the sample has to be random. Our last pro tip for this video is a general math strategy. As you work through the math of the question, write down your work. It's pretty simple. You know that in real life, writing things down is a great way to remember them. Just use that logic on the test. You don't have time to make careless mistakes. If you take away one nugget of knowledge from this video, make it be this. Write down your work. Write down your work. Write down your work. Thanks for letting me take you through this training, guys and gals.